Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to be explaining autism spectrum disorders. I'm not going to talk about how to diagnose it, but I am going to talk about the different types and levels of autism spectrum disorders. And then I'm going to ask you, uh, does it really even matter? Now, full disclosure, for the last 21 years or so I've been treating a lot of different uh, autism spectrum disorder patients. Some very severe, some nonverbal. Uh, some that have uh, hit and bit me. <laughs> so I have a lot of experience with this. And I didn't want to spend this video talking about how it's diagnosed because you can go to the CDC website. I'll even give you the link. And it talks how it's diagnosed. Really what you need to know about autism is that there are a couple of key features, right? core symptoms. One is uh, deficits in social emotional reciprocity, meaning uh, they don't really participate and don't seem to understand uh, social norms or relationships. Uh, then there is a problem with uh, nonverbal communications used for uh, social relationships. And then there are uh, usually some sort of uh, problem with stereotyped or restricted or repetitive, uh, restricted repetitive interest or stereotyped behaviors. You can look all those up and I have a lot of videos I'm going to be uh, explaining on this topic because like I said I've been treating this for 21 years and I have a lot to, to tell you. But what I want to show you with you in this video is what are the types and levels? Well, the thing you have to know is, is that there's this thing called the DSM. And we have kind of a problem with the DSM. So the DSM is basically like a manual. It's the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual. And in version 4 of that, uh, there was autism, right? And autism was under an umbrella called Pervasive Developmental Disorders. And then under autism, we had things like Asperger's uh, and Rett Syndrome and... Um, uh, PDD, NOS, Pervasive Developmental Disorder, not otherwise specified. However, in the newer DSM, the DSM-5, those categories are gone. There's really just autism spectrum disorder. And then there are three levels. And the levels are designed to describe how severe is the autism spectrum disorder. So it can get a little confusing if you're reading things that are using the old language, but, there is, but no one's really using that anymore. So what you got to know is that level one uh, is not very uh, impaired. Level two is kind of middle of the road. And level three is, is quite impaired. Uh, level three is someone that might have a, a lot of stimming, uh, a lot of stimming that gets in the way. It could be someone that has a lot of challenge behaviors, uh, challenging behaviors like meltdowns, that kind of thing. But before I go even further than that, I just got to tell you that, yes, it's level one, level two, level three, but what is that really telling you? Okay? They're just labels. None of that is telling you, or anyone else for that matter, what do you do about this? And that has been kind of my problem for 20 years, dealing with this, 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 this group of patients and this group of children is, yeah, I understand they have autism, there's some core features, but what are we going to do about it? The good thing is, <laughs> the good thing is, there's a ton of research out there that lets us know that autism spectrum uh, children can have a whole host of metabolic, immune, uh, immune system, hormone problems, GI problems. And the thing is, that little level one, two, three I told you about doesn't tell you any of that. It doesn't tell you if the kid has an autoimmune problem. It doesn't tell you if they have a, a dysbiosis that's causing GI inflammation and poor nutrient absorption, right? None of that is there. So even though I'm making this video explaining you know, the different levels, I have to stop and tell you that you know, does it really matter? I mean, yeah, it matters because we want to know how severe it is. But in terms of what are we going to do to help this child become functional and independent and help them reach their unlimited potential that they have, those levels aren't going to do it. Those are just labels. So I have a whole lot of videos that are going to be on this channel very soon uh, going through everything I know about autism, everything I've done to help it, everything I've done uh, to treat it. And what I want to let you know is realistically, I have had in my own practice over the last 20 years, I've had kids that were very severe, that were nonverbal, that became verbal. I've had kids that would be classified, you know, severe level three, that transitioned to level two, to level one. I've had some kids become undiagnosed. That happens. Does it happen to every kid? No. But I firmly believe that every child that gets diagnosed with autism has still an unlimited potential to do and be better, right? You have to be very careful about the expectations you put on kids because you put a ceiling on them, it, they can live up to that or live down to it. So let me just tell you again, 
Are there different levels of autism? Sure, there's level one, two, three. They're based on severity, how much support is going to be needed. But I have a bigger question to you is, is what are we going to do about it? And so stay tuned to this channel because I have a lot of things to tell you guys. Uh, there's a lot to do, a lot to know. <laughs> uh, we're going to be talking about all sorts of things, like, you know, what uh, we're talking a little bit about what we think causes autism, talking about all the different things I've seen in, in my patients over the years. Um, so this is just like the scratching the surface, kind of letting you get into the getting to get into the ball game. So um, I'm excited to tell you guys all the stuff that uh, that uh, we'll be talking about. So I'll see you next time.